Surveillance. Investigators Mike Evans and Casey Pine here with this week's episode number 74 of Australian Private Investigator, Government Investigator, Corporate Investigator and Loss Adjuster Weekly News. Hi Casey, how are you today? Hi Mike, I'm very good, thank you. Okay, you've got some big news for us on the OSINT front about what happened last weekend in Missing Persons Week? Sure do. Right, that'll be coming up soon, people. But before we do that, we've got to have a look at this week's job vacancies. And for those of you that are looking for a job in investigations or a risk management or government investigations, go to this Australian Security Academy Facebook page. It's dedicated to jobs that come up during the week in the industry. And there you'll see current jobs that are available. So you can apply to become a licensed private investigator, a government investigator or a corporate investigator. So if you can't remember the name of that Facebook page, just hit replay after this show has finished or simply watch the replay on our uh, YouTube channel tomorrow. Okay, so first job this week. Sure fact, uh, looking for investigators in New South Wales and in Victoria. Get in touch with Mary Mansell. So Mary will be able to help you. Her contact details are there on the screen. So if you contact info at surefact.com.au, Mary's the person that will reply to you and help you. These are two uh, snoozers that work at Surefact. They're actually the founders, Pat and Paul, and they'll be very happy to receive your application to work with them doing workers' compensation investigation, general insurance investigation, liability investigations, and flying drones. So get in touch with um, Mary. She'll put you in touch with these guys and get your career really humming. Quantum Corp um, are looking for investigators in Victoria for general insurance investigators. Quantum Corp are an established investigation firm in Australia. And if you're in Victoria, get in touch with Quantum Corp. Um, just Google them and you'll find them. Uh, Bit of, a, bit of a hard one to spell it sometimes, but again, watch the replay and you'll get those details. Mario at Insight Intelligence wants to hear from you if you are a workers' compensation investigator or a general insurance investigator. Here's the contact details for Insight Intelligence. Get in touch with Joshua. Send him your resume, copy of your licence. They'd love to hear from you at Insight Intelligence if you're looking for work in New South Wales. Brookside in uh, seeking investigators in New South Wales and Victoria. So uh, don't miss out on that opportunity to work for Brookside. That's their web page uh, where you can uh, apply for a job there. Just Google Brookside Investigations and you'll see on the Contact Us page how you can get in touch with them to apply for work. Quantum Corp is seeking liability claims consultants in New South Wales as well as that general insurance one down in Victoria. So don't miss out on that, people. Here's a great opportunity if you've got an advanced diploma in government investigations to be a safe work inspector for uh, New South Wales. So that's a job that's come out this week. Kerrigan's in Victoria are looking for surveillance agents and factual investigators. Precise Investigations down in Victoria, they're looking for factual investigators to do workers' compensation work down there in uh, Victoria. Get in touch with them. Tass, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, just Google Precise Investigators and Investigation or go to our Facebook page and you'll see them there. 
Synergy Workplace Investigations in New South Wales are looking for factual investigators, as too are Vanguard, Risk Australia in Melbourne looking for factual investigators. So there's big demand at the moment. This is a really interesting new one that came out this week. The Education Department down in Victoria are seeking an investigator down there. Now, this is a job where you're going to have to have a Diploma of Government Investigation. Really great opportunity to work for the Education Department down in Victoria. Um, a Fraud Operations Manager for uh, Australian Super. All these jobs are on our Facebook page. You can see them there. WorkSafe uh, seeking an internal review officer. Had a few problems down there internally recently um, with an internal fraud. So internal review officer down there at WorkSafe, you may be involved in that sort of thing in the future. Who knows? ProCare is seeking people in Perth. They're seeking people in New South Wales. G'day, George. How are you going, mate? Really good to see you. I hope you're enjoying that coffee mug, buddy. <laughs> Um, circumstance investigator is required down at OIS Global in Melbourne in Victoria. Now, OIS Global's head person, Steve, is um, the head of the AISP Industry Association down in Victoria. So uh, get in touch with Steve. He's got a job down there for a factual investigator. Now, you might think, well, hang on, Melbourne's in lockdown. We can't go out and do work and investigate. While that sort of thing's on, the investigators are still working. They do it remotely by video interviews and that's allowable today under those circumstances so the clients pivot to match that okay you might not be able to go out and do a scene inspection straight away but you can do your statement taking online for many of the clients uh, the victorian commission for gambling and liquor regulation is seeking a inspector down there so again that's a sort of level where you're going to need a diploma of government investigation for that government job Auto in general, one of the biggest insurance um, claims agents in the world. Um, they're looking for investigators in Brisbane, so get in touch with them. There are just too many loss adjusting jobs to list. Just get on so you can type in loss adjuster. Um, you see there Sedgwick and Crawford's. Crawford's the biggest loss adjusting firm in the world are looking for investigators. Here's some different ones here. Crawford again, um, dominating it because they're the biggest. They're looking for, uh, looking for loss adjusters. And there's even more there for loss adjusters at Crawford. So that's just some of the jobs that are available this week. G'day, Michelle. How are you going? Good to hear from you. Hope you're having a great Friday. Who did I miss, Casey? <laughs> oh, no, um, George and Michelle are so fine. Oh, George, right, okay. from his mug. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Georgie. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I, Casey and I will have a drink from our mugs. <laughs> <laughs> I just pour myself a coffee. <laughs> it's a bit warm at this starting point in the show, so good to see you, Michelle. Good to see you, um, uh, George. Thanks, thanks for dropping a, a note there. Well, people in breaking news. Here we go, breaking news. One of our students broke his foot last year and uh, had to have it re back on, and he's home recuperating and studying why he's doing that. And his name's Dan. G'day, Dan, mate. I hope you're feeling better. Dan asked me a secret surveillance question earlier in the day, and I promised him that here I would give him an answer to that secret surveillance question. So here you go, Dan. Here is your answer, mate. And guess what? For asking that question, you've won a private investigator coffee mug, which will be on its way to you next week. Dan, here it comes. G'day, Daniel. I've been told to tell you that the answer to that question is correct. Well done. Well, it doesn't sound like much of an answer, but it was a secret surveillance question. So he's got the affirmative answer. So well done there, uh, Daniel. You'll be this time next week, mate. You'll be enjoying, just like Casey, George and I are. Um, <laughs> good on your study, Michelle. <laughs> just like we're having our mug of coffee right now. You'll be doing that next week while your foot's getting better as you're studying away. And I'm glad you're enjoying the course too, Daniel. It's a really nice letter that you, email that you sent us today. Casey, so we're coming to you. What were you involved in and what happened in relation to your investigation work? Absolutely. And I'd like um, anyone that just saw the man that was blacked out that gave the answer, just say, I know if you know who that is. I'm curious to see who, who knows who that is. <laughs> okay. So, sorry, I'm just, I have to find my, we've got so many things in here, a big show today. So on the weekend, I am sure uh, some of you have heard me talk about it before, but I uh, went as a contestant in the Trace Labs uh, Capture the Flag 
for missing persons. And I thought I might just talk about that because I've had a few different people contact me about OSINT and what they can do to get better uh, when it comes to open source intelligence as a private investigator. And this is definitely one of those opportunities. So they crowdsource OSINT to help find missing people. And you don't have to be a full on you butte know everything OSIN investigator. There are a lot of people that go into this contest that are just hobbyists. They just enjoy helping out with missing persons and they enjoy OSIN. They like the, the challenge. And the, these are real uh, OSIN challenges, which is always really, sorry, real missing people, which is really interesting. So these are not fake people that they've made up. These are real people that are really missing and we have to come up with real intel. And it's not generally just like um, private investigation where we hand over facts. We are actually allowed to deduce some intelligence from the intel that we find. So it's really, really interesting. And I'll show you, so this is an example of some of the points that you get um, for the information that you get. And because they are working with law enforcement, you really do have to put quite a bit of effort in. You can't just go, oh, there's their name and find things that are already out there. You're actually trying to find real intel that will be handed over to law enforcement and you really have to document and put a lot of effort and detail into what you're putting forward. So it's just such fantastic um, experience for any private investigator. Oh, and there's my dog, <laughs> wandered in the back. Um, and yeah, so you get real world experience when it comes to OSINT. And this is, we use this a lot, which is um, the OSINT framework. If you go to osintframework.com, it gives you heaps of information and different pivot points where you can look into things because often you're given people that don't really have a huge digital footprint. So you kind of end up getting stuck and it's like, well, now where do I look? And this is definitely osintframework.com. It gives you heaps of information, gives you heaps of ideas of what you can be looking for, which is really, really interesting and really good. And one of my favorite teams who always I've seen um, competing and always come in the top three there, Dwayne the Stock Johnson. <laughs> so it's a really <laughs> nice community with um, a really good feel. Everybody, uh, they're really passionate about this and passionate about finding people. There are some incredible OSINT investigators that tend to come in the top three or top five. They usually... Um, work in law enforcement or I know there's a few people from Deloitte who are forensic uh, cyber security people. So we have meme contests. It's like just to keep it a little bit lighthearted because it does go for about six hours of sitting in front of your computer desperately trying to find intel. Um, so we try and make each other laugh. It's really nice. It's a really good community feel. And at the end of it, you tend to get a little badge Trace Labs contestant participation. So that's my third one. And I learn something new every single time. I um, not only do I learn from my teammates, but I also am really active in speaking to everybody, like a lot of the other people uh, on LinkedIn to learn from them. And yeah, it's just a fantastic way to hone in on your skills, contribute um, while well, volunteering to help find missing people. I know that one of the um, I think it was the first one I did. There was an Australian missing person. It tends to help if there's a missing person that's from your location because you have a bit more knowledge about your area, that area. Um, but often they're American or Canadian. Um, but still, you're still going to find stuff because digital footprints these days are huge. So... Yeah, and that, that's it. It's, oh, and the, the website for this is, um, oh, I thought I had it in there. It's tracelabs.org, I believe. So you can easily just look up Trace Labs. They haven't announced another CTF yet, um, but absolutely keep an eye out for them. If you would like experience in missing persons um, and OSINT, can't recommend it enough. 
good experience, Casey, and a very good learning experience. Thanks for sharing that with us. You're going to be back very soon with some more stuff that's happened this week. We'll see you then. Here's some stuff from the investigation industry news in Australia down in Adelaide. A uh, collectibles card shop was burgled and a whole lot of very highly collectible cards were stolen. And they were rare cards and the criminals stole them, burgled it, then went back to the shop that morning and tried to sell the cards to the shop people. So there's a don't do this and don't copy that if you're <laughs> like that sort of uh, burglary sort of thing to do. Don't go and try and sell them back to the people you stole them from. That's a bit like calling up the police and saying someone stole your drugs. They're going to be very interested to hear that. Um it, nationally, um, a journalist of the ABC has um, found herself liable for $80,000 in a defamation claim against a politician. So that's an interesting one that came out this week. Um, she said he was taking photos of a lady in a compromised position um, and there was a lot of lawyers' letters flying and stuff, but they've ended up settling at $80,000, which is a large amount considering the person had no loss in relation to that. So that happened. You can see that on the ABC. Um, uh, <laughs> interesting one, it never stops. There's a fake doctor down in Bankstown Hospital in Sydney. She worked there for a, a few months before she was discovered. So those hospitals, checks and balances and checking of applicants for jobs, that sort of thing is going to be checked now by the regulator APRA, who we have regular jobs for on this website. Very sad news down in Tasmania in workers' compensation Cherry grower reed fruits used a mime to induct a migrant worker who died. So they were showing him how to work around moving machinery. He was Ethiopian, uh, Ethiopian. He didn't speak English. This is his three daughters and his wife here that have survived him. This accident happened in June last year and he was on a cherry picking website and they have operating moving machinery. He was given an induction with sort of sign language to do it. So. He um, died uh, in the accident. Um, this is what you're going to be investigating. All right, now don't shy away from this. It's sad. It's that's going to be a three box of tissues interview with the um, widow in relation to uh, uh, what she knew of it, what he complained about going to work, that sort of thing, how he was taught to do these sorts of things. So they will all come into account when you're investigating this. So you are going to investigate sad things. You don't investigate happy things. Well, I've never done it, but someone might have. So what happened to the gentleman? Well, he was on a cherry orchard and this is the trailer that they put the cherries in once they picked them into their bucket and they dumped them into this trailer where they have plastic buckets to receive it. So they put a sidestep on the trailer so people would not get run over by the tyre being pulled that was holding the trailer at the rear. Now, what the gentleman did was he went and stood on the sidestep as he emptied his bucket. His right foot slipped where that circle is off the edge of the sidestep. He was sucked down into the wheel and he was crushed in there and he died in hospital later that night. It would have been awful awful way to die. So that happened down in Tasmania. Um, a loss adjuster would have investigated that fatal accident and um, it's just come out in court down there this week in relation to um, the charges against the employer there, which would be pretty serious and a very serious fine. So that's happened in Tassie this week. Uh, what else has been going on? Oh, sexual harassment case in Brisbane. A uh, young lady who was from the Philippines had a job and she was sexually harassed by her employer. Um, and she ended up uh, receiving, uh, in the end, a $130,000 payout for that sexual harassment. So that happened in a Brisbane laundromat where a person thought he was free to take advantage of a person who uh, he employed uh, in doing that. And his insurer has now paid out $130,000 in damages to the claimant in relation to that. This one happened today. And this is what insurance started for and insurance start, investigation started for shipping. And this uh, ship over near Japan has got uh, grounded um, and it's tried to pull itself off from being grounded and it's within half of the weight of the load. So that's going to be a major um, claim against that ship's insurer. They've spilled oil into the environment there. That's going to be a big cleanup bill and that's what's happened uh, in the in the news, just around the place for investigators this week. So, as Casey said, she did some international stuff <laughs> this week, 
And it's really important that you understand any investigation you do would be wide and varied from fatal accidents, sexual harassment, racial discrimination, um, defamation. You're going to have all these things to do as a licensed investigator, as a loss adjuster, a corporate investigator, or as a government investigator. Every one of them um, will come across your desk at some stage. So this week we asked our um, industry association uh, from Airlap, um, our executive vice president, what she has as far as ideas go in relation to what she wants to implement during her three months serve as the executive vice president. So I'll play that. This is pre-recorded. I'll just play the short version. Okay. Good morning, Renee. We are here um, with our executive vice president for Airlap and Renee is going to tell us about an idea that she has had um, to help the association. Renee, over to you. Thanks, Casey. So my idea is for individuals enrolled and studying any Australian Security Academy program that they basically can become a student member of AirLap. This will engage future members early in the association and the benefits include not only association membership, but also networking and CPD. Fantastic, because those things are very important for new investigators. Do you wish that you had that as a student? Yeah, I did. I did have <laughs> that. Um, yeah. It would have helped a little bit more just to, um, you know, engage in with the laws and rules and keeping up to date a bit more. Yeah, even networking, because networking is a kind of a crucial part of your business and success as a private investigator. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've cut us off there really, Casey, but that's a great idea, isn't it? So we're, we're able to get that up and running now for our students today? Yep, sure. Okay, so I've got a picture of their badge here somewhere. <laughs> There's too many things here for me to find it. <laughs> you, um, um, thanks, Casey. Yeah. So people, down, scrolling down across the bottom of the screen, screen if you're an enrolled student studying, today or last week or six months ago and you're listening to Rosie barking in the background, you can um, contact me, send me an email and I will organise for Casey to send you the badge that says you're a student uh, member of AirLap. Now, AirLap is the Association of Investigation uh, Risk and Loss Adjusting Professionals. This is what it looks like. And you are a member of that industry association. Costs nothing. It comes free with your course. So you have substantial advantages in studying at the Australian Security Academy. You don't have to go and pay $600 to be a member of an industry association every year. You don't have to go and pay $200 to be a member of an industry association every year. All you have to do is study at the Australian Security Academy. Academy, you're automatically a member, which has advantages for your future employer. And you can put that badge on your LinkedIn and on your Facebook page just to let everybody know that you are a member of an industry association. So whether you're a student, life member or associate, doesn't matter, you get the badge that goes with that. So that's something that Renee suggested, which I thought was just an absolutely brilliant suggestion in relation to what we should be doing with our industry association moving forward. <laughs> Where did you find that, Casey? I can't... There it is. I it. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. But not to be outdone, here's Casey's ideas. Okay. <laughs> so, Casey, as Executive Vice President, do you have any ideas? Yes, absolutely. Um, I would love to help support you with this because um, the association is really important. It's hard to find good quality associations in any industry. Um, so my ideas were basically just helping students with um, continuous professional development, creating seminars that we can provide for our members online so they can learn about specialties such as surveillance or OSINT or statement taking or factual investigation and anything new that's kind of coming up in um, legislation or anything to do with that industry that's new just to keep people informed and keep them educated because um, we've got some, some amazing investigators that are incredibly smart and they need somewhere 
to learn and continue with their professional development. So that was my idea. That's a great idea, um, especially the OSIN. Everyone loves um, <laughs> what you do there. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, it's one of those things that's kind of new to our industry in Australia. It's been around in different countries in different forms for quite a while and it's just kind of starting to get traction here and it's something that just another little skill that we can add um, to our toolbox as private investigators. So, Yeah, it's very interesting and then it gives um, investigators ways to look into everything and ways they didn't know about. Yeah, exactly. And at least with creating these seminars and getting people in from different specialties and talking to our members about this stuff. Okay, people, look, um, I want you to forget you ever saw Renee, okay? Last weekend she was doing undercover work. Good on you, Renee. Well done. <laughs> and she was actually involved with this character. G'day, Daniel. I've been told to tell you that the answer to that question is correct. Well done. So <laughs> Renee's gone and networked and she's had some um, guidance there. Good on you, Renee. It was great to see you doing that last week. Um, and thank you for your idea. And Casey, brilliant idea. The reason the OSINT aspect of it and us moving forward with teaching it for our association is every employer, whether they're government, corporate or private or loss adjusters, need you to locate witnesses. The reason they've got an investigation is because it's too hard to sort out on the phone by the claims manager who, if they could do it for 10 minutes work for $6 in a phone call themselves, they would. But because it's so complex and they need to find six witnesses that worked in that location that were all university students eight years ago, because now the matter has come to um, a very expensive court conclusion or is about to, they need them located and they need them spoken to. That's what we do. We find those people and that's what Casey and Renee's OSINT plan is good for us as investigators moving forward. So great, great ideas, people. One of the things I'm going to be implementing, and they're not going to like it, but I'm approaching Cappy New South Wales to get rid of their ridiculous two-year um, provisional licence uh, system that they have in Cappy New South Wales. We want a level playing field for every investigator in Australia. We want respect for the investigators that have studied their course. And we're going to be approaching Cappy and say, OK, when the person graduates, they've got to go straight to a full licence. We're going to be battling that for a couple of years. Um, it won't happen tomorrow, but they're three of the initiatives you've just seen. So student membership for Airlap straight in, straight away. We're putting on future OSINT programs for our um, industry association and we're approaching New South Wales to get real about the licensing of investigators in New South Wales who have it up against them with that provisional licence. As a guide, if you were the Chief Commissioner of Police in New South Wales and you left the police to become a private investigator tomorrow, you're on a provisional licence for a year, just the same as someone who's 17 and left school uh, last year, is about to turn 18 and isn't allowed to get their licence. So we want the same in Victoria, Queensland, Tasmania, South Australia, Western Australia and in New South Wales as well. So something to think about with our association is something we're going to be pushing as a collective. Really important, this is our first um, month, our first program that we've gone straight to LinkedIn on. And in our LinkedIn area, there's the AirLap LinkedIn page. So the Association Investigation Risk and Loss Adjusting Professionals, um, look for that on LinkedIn and join it, please, people. Scrolling across the screen is the contacts for you to get hold of me so you can, Casey can send you your badge. Now, if you've already graduated, Casey will send you your member badge. If you're a student, Casey will send you your student badge. And we've got um, a big program next week explaining how all those things work. Um, done that, done that, got all that done. Actually, interesting, Mike, I had a, um, a meeting with one of our alumni this week and he has worked um, all around the world doing investigations. And in Australia, we have some of the, like, one of the hardest qualifications and one of um, 
with licensing and everything. It's really, really quite strict on us, whereas around the world, he's like he could be in London and then in Paris and there's no like border restrictions, whereas here you go from the Gold Coast to Tweed Heads and it's a completely different jurisdiction with different laws around what we can and can't do as investigators. So I just thought that that was really interesting. It's very interesting and it just shows you how important it is to clients who are paying you to do this work and paying very well actually in some areas. It's important that they have a qualified licensed professional doing it. They don't want someone with a criminal record doing it. They don't want someone with no training or no idea about conflicts of interest or things that are going to crap out when the matter gets to court later on. They want professionals doing that work. And I really support what you just said there, Casey. That's so important. Well, people, that's our 30 minutes for episode 74. We're going to be back next week where we squash everything that's happened, plus job vacancies, plus news, plus industry association into one 30-minute program. Each week we end with a traditional thing or for a short part of the end of the uh, movie called Cold Eyes. It's a Korean movie. If you get a chance to Google it and watch it and you like a bit of surveillance, it's got some great surveillance moments in it. Here we go. This is what we... <laughs> Yes, that's how every surveillance agency in Australia ends their week with mission complete. All units, which is what you're called by Korean Investigation Agency, all units now return to base. Casey, thanks for coming in. Stick around, have a chat to you in a second. And people, Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Anything you want to see, watch the replay on YouTube tomorrow or you can watch the replay on Facebook and on LinkedIn just after this program. Thanks for watching. See you.